Shalom. Last time when we were learning Psalm 23, we came across two very similar words. We saw the phrase, Ta'arach lefanai shulchan, which means, you will prepare before me a table. And at the end, we saw this phrase, Le'orach yamim, for the length of days. Now the two words are spelled differently, one with an ayin and one with an aleph. And we have seen that this has caused homonyms to occur before. So when we look at the root with the ayin, arach, it means to set in order or to arrange as we saw with the table. Genesis 22, 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. In Exodus 40, verse 4. And you shall bring in the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And you shall bring in the candlestick and light the lamps thereof, setting up the tabernacle. We also see it translated as to prepare. Numbers 23, 4. And God met Balaam and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. So the preparation of the altar requires arranging things, putting them in, in order. Psalm 89, 6. For who in the heaven can be compared unto Jehovah? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto Jehovah? So if we lay things out and we arrange them side by side, then we can compare them. Job 28, 19. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. So if we're comparing things, we can see which things are equal to each other and which things are not. We have a couple of words that come from this root. Ma'arach is a noun that means arrangement. Here it's translated again as preparations. Proverbs 16.1, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from Yehovah. Another very similar word, ma'arechet, also means the rose, and it can also be translated as the showbread, which is laid out in order. Leviticus 24, 7. And you shall put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto Yehovah. Moving on to the second root with the aleph, orech, means the length. This can be either in space or in time. Genesis 6.15 And this is the fashion which you shall make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Psalm 21.4 He asked of life, and you gave it to him, even length of days, forever and ever. As a verb, it can be translated as to prolong, to make something long. Deuteronomy 4.26, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land where unto you go over Jordan to possess it. You shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. In Judges 2.7, And the people served Jehovah all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of Jehovah that he did for Israel. So the elders' days were prolonged and they outlived Joshua. Proverbs 19.11 The discretion of a man defers his anger, and it is his glory to pass over transgression. If we wait when we're angry, if we are discreet, then we will not blow up and do something rash. Isaiah 54.2 Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Spare not lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Now there's an interesting idiom which we see frequently and that is erech apayim. This literally means erech is long, apayim is the nose. It's, it's dual because you have two nostrils and this means long suffering. Exodus 34 6 and Yehovah passed by before him and proclaimed Yehovah, Yehovah God, merciful and gracious long-suffering, erech and abundant in goodness and truth. There is, I think, one time an idiom that uses the word short-nosed to mean angry, and that's kitsar apayim. Proverbs fourteen seventeen. 
He that is soon angry deals foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Usually the idiom for anger, and in particular God's anger, is has to do with the burning of the nose. In one case, vayichar apo, and we see the af here is in the singular, it's not in the dual, as the nostrils of long suffering. Yichar is burning. In Genesis 39, 19. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spoke unto him, saying, After this manner did your servant to me, then his wrath was kindled. Another word, boer, is used with the nose, boer apo, also for anger. Isaiah 30, 27. Behold, the name of Jehovah comes from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue is a devouring fire. This is a common image if you think about the bull when he's angry, the smoke is coming out of his nostrils. His anger is burning, and it's in his nose. There's one more word with a different spelling that also can be part of this similar words group, and this is arach with a chet instead of a kaf. The noun appears in a few places, Second Samuel 12, 4. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take up his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him from the parable that Nathan told David. In Job 34, 8, this appears as a verb, but it is a noun in Hebrew, which goes in company with the workers of iniquity and walks with wicked men. The basic idea of this route is a path, not so much a pathway that we walk on, but a path as a manner of behavior. Genesis 49:17, Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that bites the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backwards. Psalm 25, 4, show me your ways, Jehovah, teach me your paths. An interesting verse is Psalm 8, 8, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. A 19th century naval officer, an oceanographer named Matthew Maury, whose nickname was Pathfinder of the Seas. He is considered the founder of modern oceanography. He took many scriptures quite literally and made application to the ocean. And this is his most famous scripture-based insight, based on Psalm 8.8, that there are paths in the sea, that the oceans have subsurface currents with regular circulation patterns. Some examples of this include the equatorial undercurrents of the Pacific, the Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, the California undercurrent, and the Agulas undercurrent, the deep thermohaline current in the Atlantic, and bottom gravity currents near Antarctica. So he literally applied the Bible and he made an amazing discovery. Derived from this from this root, or cha, we have the word caravan. The caravan is a group of people who are on the way, on a path to somewhere. Genesis thirty-seven twenty-five, And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead, with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt, and they carried Joseph with them. This root is more common in modern Hebrew as the word for guest. The male guest is oreach, and the female guest is orachat. Now, in spite of the fact that these roots contain the words for prepare and weigh, the phrase prepare the way has nothing to do with these roots. It has to do with a word we studied previously, lift note, to turn, and the way is a literal way, derech. In two examples, Isaiah 57, 14, and shall say, cast up, cast up, prepare the way, panu derech, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Again, in Malachi 3, 1, behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way, pina derech before me. So the concept here is we're turning our face in another direction. We're taking a road and we're looking for something, turning for something, anticipating something new. Until next time, keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.